Many times you hear about the value of the underhook, whether it's you know in a standing position or in a fight. You hear a lot of you know the commentators talk about the underhook and how one needs to get that underhook to control the other person more effectively. The value of the underhook isn't necessarily um, the strength of the arm in this underhook position, because yes, I may be in that inside position with an underhook, but to utilize this, there's just gonna be, he can really affect this lever of my arm and be able to resist my ability to try to push and move him. Furthermore, he could actually lean on my arm and drive that all the way down to the ground because there's nothing really supporting this arm. And in order for this to be, I guess, effective or resist his energy, it's gonna take a lot of muscular strength. And of course, that isn't what jujitsu is all about. The position of my body is crucial to this underhook. The closer I get to the torso of my body, the easier it is and the more effective and efficient it's gonna be for me to deflect his ability to put pressure into me, or the easier it is for me to turn him and move him to where I hopefully want him to go. It's the same thing whether we're on the feet or on the ground, let's say, in the half guard position, which is very common. We see this all the time with this underhook position. And if I'm trying to either elevate myself to try to get up, get back to my feet, or turn the tables into something like a reversal or sweep, I want to try to try to get as close to the shoulder as possible. This is how I'm going to both deflect his energy coming into me, and it's going to help my ability to move him at the same time. While I can kind of utilize this arm to kind of move him a little bit, the arm isn't the thing that's doing the work. It's really the angle of my body and utilizing the right parts of my body to deflect him to where I want him to go. I can sometimes get to use my bicep a little bit, at least that's a little bit closer to my body, and I can kind of get my body behind it to try to turn him, and now I can maybe go to his back or move him. But the ideal placement of my body would probably be in the form of my shoulder. And I can either go in the armpit, or I can kind of get behind his back, kind of the shoulder blade area, or I can even go low by the hip and try to get my shoulder behind his leg or behind his butt. If I'm running into him and I'm just, I keep trying to push him off of me, it's just not gonna be efficient. It's just not great jujitsu. So if I can kind of wiggle my way into position and now my shoulder is here close to his ribs or close to his armpit, put pressure into me now, Josh. I can both move him and deflect his ability to pin me. Let's say I have, you know, control past his knee, and I'm using my arm to try to move him, put pressure in him, he put weight. He gets really heavy. Not only that, the placement of my shoulder and how I angle my body is extremely important as well. If the back of my shoulder is more turned towards the ground, if he leans on me, he can then pin that shoulder. The closer the front of my shoulder is to the floor here, try to pin me please. I can talk normally, I can deflect his ability to kind of, or support his ability to try to drive me down, and he can't really move me. Now I can kind of wiggle my shoulder into position, I can either grab up high, I can grab underneath the armpit, I can grab the waist, because now my shoulder is kind of acting as that deflection device, and now I can find myself on the back much, much easier. From the standing position as well, it's the exact same thing on the ground. So this arm is going to allow me to move him, but again, it's not this arm that's just going to move Josh into position or allow me to just get to his back, because all the, otherwise we're just gonna keep going around in a circle here with no effective, positive change of position. From here, it's almost like this is the thing that's holding the door open for me in order for me to maneuver my body into position where now I'm closer to the torso of my body, the skeleton of my body for me to now take him for a ride. I can even if I get you know, underneath him, I can pick him up with my hip and shoulder to support him. That is going to be extremely difficult, or at least I can't do it with my arm here. That's now turned into a lever where he can kind of control it. So this is holding the door open where I can now position myself to either maneuver to his back, the same way we would kind of do it if I'm gonna do a duck under, right? It's like I'm opening this in so I can move into that position and I'm not all the way over here, I'm tight to his body because now I can 
turn him either with my head or my chest to move into position. So it's the exact same thing here. I have my under position. I can maneuver my shoulder in. Now I'm way more effective in turning him, getting to a deeper position to his hip, or getting him to give up his back. This is a common theme. It's not like, you know, on the feet, it's different than on the ground. It's all the same stuff. The key in learning Jiu Jitsu is trying to find those principles that apply across the board in all the different positions. There is no difference in grappling on the feet than there really is on the ground. It's the same forces at play, and we're trying to replicate that as many times as possible in the various positions. Thanks for watching, guys. If there's anything you want to see in a future video, or if you have any questions, leave a comment.